Awesome. Pleasure to welcome to the show Navy goalie from a long time ago. I guess six or seven years ago. It's John Connors. John, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks, David. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, before I hit record, uh, I said this is a long time coming. We probably should have done this six or seven years ago, but you know, the podcast has really taken off and now, now is our moment. So we're going to do it. Um, before we get into it, I'd love to hear the story of when you first jumped into gold. Do you remember that? Yeah, uh, definitely. So um, I'm, I'm one of five boys. I'm the middle child of five boys. And my oldest brother, Brennan, played lacrosse at Navy as well. Uh, and he was coming home from school one day and found a, a lacrosse goalie stick in the dumpster. Um, and he took it home. And me being the younger goalie, he, he threw me in that. And I used all like the street hockey pads, like tape pillows to my body. And um, he, yeah, he was shooting on me ever since. That's awesome. I, uh, I did a post a while back. I said, there's only three reasons why people become goalies. And one of them was their older sibling wants somebody to shoot on. So you are definitely, <laughs> yeah. in, you are definitely in yeah. that category. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was ended up being the only goalie out of us five. So, uh, you know, all, all four of my brothers really shot on me all the time growing up. There you go. You got the reps. You got the reps, yeah. baby. <laughs> yeah. Um, and what is the age difference? I mean, was he at Navy and you were just like a young kid? So I imagine he's bringing the heat, uh, huh? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it was when he was in high school. So there's a, okay. there's a six year gap between me and him. Uh, and I, I, you know, it might've been like fourth or fifth grade when he brought that goalie stick home. And um, yeah, he, he shot on me all the time. Even, even when he would come home for breaks at Navy, whether I was in middle school or high school, uh, yeah. you know, we would go to the local school and he'd bring a bucket of balls and shoot on me all the time. Yeah, and this had to be like late '90s, right? Like this, so it was probably an STX Goldmaster or something like that. Yeah, it was like the abyss, like the uh, the solid sidewall, um, like the real heavy head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. That's awesome. So I guess from that point, like you know, you're growing up on Long Island, right? Pretty pretty heavy yeah. lacrosse bed. Uh, you guys are all into yeah. lacrosse. Like, but how do you go about <laughs> making uh, learning how to make saves? Yeah, so I think that's like the toughest thing with, uh, especially with youth goalies, because, you know, every team is re like required to have a goalie, but not many people have played the position. So like coaching yeah. is, is kind of tough because, no, uh, you know, it, it, it's tough just because you never saw the shot before and, you know, don't really necessarily know what to do, this and that. So uh, like growing up, I was getting shot on by my brother. It was more so raw talent. Like I would – they would see somebody that's six years older than me shooting on me. And then next thing I know I'm playing with people my own age. So I was able to, you know, save the ball that way. But it wasn't until like later on in middle school and early high school where I really learned the fundamentals and, um, you know, got paired up another goalie on my travel team. Uh, me and him really complimented each other really well. And that's where my game really started to uh, get a lot better. Yeah. Was it like a coach that, that kind of showed you the ropes or was some camps you attended or had, like how specifically did you go about learning it? Yeah. So it was a combination of things, it, you know, the coaches, Sean and I, we had Mike Tameo uh, being our, our goalie coach and he definitely helped out a lot. Uh, but before that it was, um, I played on Long Island Express. They're still around a club team. Yeah. Um, and I played with this guy, Jake Gambitsky. He's from the town next to me. Uh, he ended up playing at Harvard. Um, and I was the lefty, he was the righty. Uh, you know, I, I would say my strong part of my game was the outside shots, his was the inside shots. He was great at those quick outlet passes. I was more of the slow clear. So we really complemented each other's style of play really well. And, um, you know, we had, it, it wasn't necessarily a competition with me and him. Um, it was more of just finding ways to get better. So we would, we would watch college across on Saturday. Hey, I saw so-and-so do this, so-and-so do that. And we would try it at practice. And, you know, I think that's the best part about, about being a goalie. There's so many ways to do it. You know, the goalies come in all shapes and diff all different shapes and sizes. So, you know, having somebody that was just curious to get better and, and push me, uh, you know, it, it was great. It was awesome. That's really when my game started to take off. That is really amazing. And that's cool that you were able to do that. Just kind of watch goalies. I mean, that's what, that's what I do <laughs> like all, all day. Yeah. I just kind of watch goalies and, and try and talk to yeah. them. I had the Hopkins goalie on the other day and uh, on the men's side, and he was talking about like low angle shots. He like comes out a little bit. A lot of goalies hold the pipe. I and mean, that's kind of like always what yeah. you're taught, right? Hold the pipe, hold the pipe. And, but he actually, he's a, he's a big dude, 6'2", 220. So he kind of comes out and he says, as long yeah. as they're locked in 
into, into a spot that I know they're going to shoot, right? It's, it's good for me. So it's just so interesting that even, you know, I've been um, coaching and playing 20 years. Even now, you can still learn new things by watching these goalies. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that was like the thing, like, you know, working with Jake and, and getting a lot better with Jake. And then uh, my high school coach, uh, Coach DeMeo, um, and then going to Navy, having Coach Jarbo, having uh, Coach Lama and Coach Dom, um, you know, and he came over from Syracuse. So it was one thing learning how, uh, you know, the Navy goalies do it. And then him coming with that experience from Syracuse, how they handle things like that low angle shot. It's um, like, that's, that's the fun part. There's so many different ways you could do it, different approaches you could take. And uh, if you save the ball, you're getting the job done. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Um, so you end up, you end up going to Chaminade high school, which, you know, it's like a lacrosse powerhouse, right? Yeah. I mean, there, there's a lot of goalies uh, that have come out of there. I mean, I think we, we connected when you said Brandon Krebs never even started at, at Chaminade, right? And now he's playing like division yeah. one. And that's just kind of shows you the level of, of talent that there is. I mean, he's getting PLL love now and, and he never even started. Yeah. So, you know, how was it I for remember you in him. high school experience? Go ahead. I remember Krabs, he was, I, I coached him at Chaminade lacrosse camp that we had each summer. So it was crazy seeing him, you know, how many years, years ago that is now, uh, seeing him playing really well uh, at the division one level. Um, playing across the Chaminade is awesome. Uh, you know, there's just the quality of talent that's there. So like, that's another thing that helped accelerate my game as well. But, you know, you look at the long list of goalies that came from Chaminade, it's, it's tremendous. Like Tommy Moore, Vinny DiPasquale, Nolan Hickey, who was another Navy goalie. Uh, Liam Entenmann's playing now, Danny Fowler. You know, you could go down the list, and, and for the most part, it's going to be a goalie, uh, you know, making it to Division One and and the backup goalie, too. Yeah. Um, but yeah. that, that's for a lot of positions on the field at Chaminade. So um, I was very, very fortunate to, to go there. Yeah, that's interesting. Do you guys, you know, because it's such a big program, do you feel like that, for you personally, as a goalie, put extra pressure on you? Yeah, so it, I was I kind of walked into a weird situation, uh, just timing wise. I had the uh, opportunity to, um, you know, start as a sophomore on on Chaminade's, uh varsity team, and uh, I'm not I'm, I'm not saying this is like it was the first goalie in a long time to really do that. Yeah. Um. So that had a lot of pressure, uh, but also like when you go to a school like Chaminade, you, you, I look at my high school teammates like. Mike Earhart was one of my starting defensemen, uh, John Urbank, Mike Quinn, who was an All-American at Yale. So, like, yes, there is a lot of pressure on you being the goalie there, but it's not like you don't have help, you know. The, the quality of coaches are great, as well as the talent that you're surrounded by. So uh, it's, it's really the, the pressure that you put on, on yourself. And then, like, once you see that first shot and, and realize you belong there, you know, get comfortable, your confidence grows, and you do well. Yeah. I think what a lot of people forget to realize too is every day, like if you have a dominant team, like every day in practice, you're going up against that dominant team. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. those are, those are probably some of the best reps you're ever going to see, uh, you know, for, for, uh, for, for a lot of, when you compare it against a lot of the games, right. I'm sure you had some pretty yeah. ep epic practices. Yeah, definitely. And like just over the cross course of all the years playing there, like, um, you know, I, I just mentioned some def like defensemen and, and guys on the defense, but, right. you know, we had Matt Cavanaugh on offense, Ryan Lukovic on offense, uh, Shane Thornton played at Yale, Matt Clarkson played at, um, at Colgate. So, and like the list, the list goes on from there. There's just, uh, there's a lot of quality players there. And then our competition, we played a lot of, uh, you know, we had St. Anthony's obviously that's our, that's our rival. And, you know, they have a whole list of people that, that played there, especially when I was there, but then, you have like West Islip, Manhattan, Yorktown, uh, Del Barton. It's always just quality teams you're playing against. So Monday through Friday in practice, you're seeing some of the best shots in the country. And get, Saturday, you're seeing the same thing. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I grew up in California in the Bay Area. And <laughs> it's, it's kind of cool to see. Uh, I mean, now there's some California teams going over there and, and playing some of those. And they're doing really well, yeah. Yeah, there's great teams out of San Diego. Is uh, San Ignatius out of the Bay Area is real strong. Uh, so it's cool. Yeah. It's great. It's great to see the sport growing and not just, uh, you know, not just a, a Long Island powerhouse. I, inter <laughs> I interviewed, uh, I interviewed uh, Larry Quinn. Larry Quinn. I don't know if you remember him. Like super. I mean, real old goalie. Played for for Team USA like in the okay. 70s. And he goes, 
Yeah, like pretty much all of Team USA was from Long Island at that point. Like 80% of Team USA yeah. was from this little part of the United States. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> it, it, it is crazy. And like, it's still, uh, it's still pretty, pretty, I don't know. It's really cool looking back on it. Cause um, even when I was in college, uh, some of the goalies that I grew up playing with were, were playing really well at the division one level, like Kyle Turry, uh, West Islip goalie, played at Duke, Zach Oliveri at UMass, um, Evan Malloy at Syracuse, like the list goes on and on. Uh, Matt Poyan, he was a goalie at, at Lehigh. So, you know, it, it, it's crazy to think about how, how good the competition is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At what point, you know, in your high school career, did you start to realize that, yeah, I'm like pretty good. I could probably, you know, I, I want to play at the next level or was it even before, before that? <laughs> so, I would say it's a, I was I was naive um, just in terms of, of that approach. Like uh, my brother committed to the Navy when I was in sixth grade, and I went to uh, one of his official visits was the Army Navy game in, in Annapolis. And in like sixth grade, you know, I quote unquote committed uh, to to go in there. Um, but you know, in high school when I was getting recruited and stuff, it, it was just it was enjoying it. Like uh, you know, I was playing playing at Shamnod, and you know, you're playing very good competition and you're, you're playing well. And then you go to the, uh, some summer tournaments and summer camps and you're playing well. It was more of like, um, I, I, I don't know. It, it was, I didn't put so much pressure on myself in the recruiting process. I, I, I did everything possible to go to the school I really wanted to be at. Um, and I was very fortunate. Yeah. Yeah. That's gotta be, um, pretty cool as a sixth grader. Uh, going to hang out with your older brother, hanging out with hanging yeah. out with college kids, being around like that environment. I've I I mean I yeah. bet if that would have happened to me, I would have been like, yeah, I'm going to Navy as well. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. So they were like, like you know, they were like the New York Yankees to me growing up. Like they yeah. were they were rock stars. But uh, you know, I was just that annoying little kid, you know, around them. But you know, I I fell in love with the program, fell in love with the team, and and obviously, uh, you know, playing across the Naval Academy is a huge honor um so yeah it, it was a dream come true yeah that's awesome so and then so and then you committed probably pretty early because this is before the rules of now you have to wait till your junior year but <laughs> at, at what point it, did you sorry sorry uh I cut you off there no, but no uh, I, I feel like it's gone back and forth the whole recruiting timeline um I remember I went to I think it's Jake Reed uh blue chip camp it was like a big time camp when I was in high school and uh, we had one kid committed before that. And that was the summer going into our junior year. And everybody was like, how, like, how do you already commit? So I didn't commit till like October of my junior year uh, okay. of high school. I had, um, yeah, the coaches were allowed to talk to you September. I didn't commit till October. So that was, I ended up, I had scol uh, scoliosis in my back. Um, so I wasn't sure if I was going to even at that point, if I was going to be able to go to Navy. So uh, uh -huh. once I got to go ahead on that, um, you know, I, I basically committed right after the doctor hung up the phone and, and said that I'm good. That you're good to go. Now, what is scoliosis? It's because I remember like in elementary school, they'd always test us for school or like scoliosis. It's like a muscle yeah. thing or like your back's out of alignment. Yeah. My, my spine, I have three curves in my back. It's, it's nothing like, you know, super serious. Uh, it, it could be one day, but, um, it mm. was, I have three curves in my back and um, they're nothing too major. It was more like passing the military physical as opposed to, yeah. uh, you know, being in any serious, uh, you know, medical condition. Got it. Okay. Well, good to hear. Good to hear you pass that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I hope, hope Paul's well with the health. Um, oh, no, I'm good. I'm all good. right. All right. You can get back out there. You can get back out there tomorrow <laughs> is what you're telling me. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no. It's all, it's all up here. Uh, anyway, was it was it always uh, service service academy for you, or did you ever give any any thought to any other any other uh, program? Yeah, I did. I, I definitely. I would be foolish. Like I did look at some other schools, especially when I was wasn't sure if I was going to be able to go to Navy or not. Um, you know, uh, and and explored other options. I wouldn't say it was more service academies. Nothing nothing against the other service academies, Army or Air Force, um, you know, just the exposure I had from my brother at Navy, yeah. you know, kind of separated that from others. But, uh, you know, I looked into Harvard with Coach uh, Tillman a little bit and then had a very fortunate few other schools in the country that were interested. But, um, you know, I had my mind made up. So, 
Nice. Uh, it was, it was good. I was in a good spot. Yeah, that's awesome. Going back to you and your brother or brothers, I should say. I mean, I, I'm, I just imagine you guys having these epic, like, epic shootouts in the backyard, right? Yeah. right? Like, like maybe, maybe one, you're so young, one comes running and crying, like he hit me in the leg. And I don't know, like, like, I, is that kind of what yeah, was going it's, on? It's a house of five boys. So like there was, there's always somebody like two fighting at any given time. Um, and then, yeah, me and my older brother, we played at 10 um, all the time. Like that, I, we didn't have a name for the game. It was just playing at 10. So I had to make 10 saves or he had to score 10 goals. If he missed the net, it didn't count. Um, and so we would also use a tennis ball in the backyard. We destroyed the garage, which was our, our backup to the net. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, and we had some, some great, great times back there. Yeah, I love it. Love that. That's awesome. Um, so for you, when you're growing up high school, you know, what was kind of your, or even I guess to this day, I mean, what's your, just your favorite part, would you say about being a, a, the goalie? I think it, like, I think it's a common thing. Like when you're the goalie, uh, you know, you're a leader in the defense. So, you know, it comes that that pressure and that, that responsibility, but also the opportunity to make, you know, the saves that you're supposed to make as well as the ones that you're not supposed to make. And, you know, can be that spark for your team. Um, you know, I grew up watching some of the best goalies play. You know, I remember Matt Russell and, and Tillman Johnson, like in particular, just like the, they could turn the tide of a game just with a, you know, a few plays. And uh, it was, it was awesome being a goalie. And, and to be honest, I played every position growing up, uh, but I wasn't athletic enough for the other one. So I stuck to goalie. Which requires some athleticism. Come on. This is a, this is a <laughs> podcast about lacrosse for lacrosse goalies. We are. Uh, I should say athleticism. I, like I, I didn't have the, uh, I'm not the, the fastest runner in the world. So. Okay, there you go. I'll give you that, which you do not need to be, but we do need to be the most <laughs> yeah. explosive inside that inside that six by yep. six. The um, quickest first two steps, that's it. Exactly, exactly. Did you play <laughs> other sports growing up? Yeah, I, I did throughout high school too. I, I played football, at, uh, wrestled, and, um, you know, growing up playing basketball. We, we House of five boys, you were always playing something. We joke around, my mom. My mom wanted as many of us out of the house as possible. So we got involved with a lot of sports, um, yeah. you know, but it was, it was always lacrosse. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. I wrestled as well, um, which is, a, which is a really um, great sport for the mental game. I think, cause like wrestling is very tough. It's very tough physically. You're out there yeah. alone. I don't know if you cut weight. That's very tough um, as well. <laughs> so, no. Good, good. Yeah. I, did, I, I, I stayed away Go ahead. Go oh, I was going to say, I did one year and it was like, I, it, my parents hated me. I was like horrible to be around. It was just, it was just not fun. <laughs> but uh, anyway, my, my whole point was like, you know, in addition to being incredibly um, like physical, it trains you to be mentally tough, I think. Yeah, definitely. It definitely does. Um, I wasn't the best wrestler by any means. And I didn't, I didn't really cut weight. I was, it was really doing it to stay in shape for, for lacrosse and oh, you know good. my weight class in middle school three of my best buddies were were around the same weight so practices were just a, a lot of fun uh but you know i wrestled i wouldn't call myself a, a wrestler you know <laughs> they, yeah. i would get tied in a knot so yeah well awesome so you get to navy and um you know i i imagine at that point like game's a lot faster you're not playing with the best competition yeah. you've ever played did your did your goalie how did your goalie game uh, adjust or change yeah I, I was thinking about it like uh just some some of the questions as well like there there's been a few like wake up calls uh i guess you would call them in my throughout my like career um and uh, you know the earliest one i remember uh was my sophomore year at chaminade in high school we played west high school um and nicky Galasso, uh i think he was a junior or a senior um but he did a question mark um and I never saw a question mark before. And I think he did it 10 more times throughout the game and, you know, missed on four of the shots and scored on the other six. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's things throughout high school and throughout college, like where I can point to where things have, have, have gotten a lot better. Uh, I think the biggest step up in college was, yes, everybody can shoot, but they could place it in uh, like basically anywhere they want. Right. And like you were talking about earlier, with, uh, you know, those low angle shots. I, I struggled with like, you know, the near pipe, um, you know, cause I remember growing up, it was always like, 
you know, they were going to shoot low and away, low and away coming around. The right. Net. And then right. next thing you know, they're pulling it right inside, inside my ear as I'm trying to hug the pipe. So, um, you know, it just comes to playing honest and, and, you know, trying to set yourself up positioning wise and whatever style you're playing, uh, to really increase your opportunity to make that save. Yeah. And you mentioned getting coaching from the great Mickey Jarbo, goalie of the year. Yeah. Um, I had him on the podcast. Um, I forget what episode, but great guy, awesome guy. Yeah. Uh, how how was it yeah, working, working with Mickey? And what you know, what did you uh, what did you learn? Uh, I learned I learned so much from. We call him Sensei. So he he's uh, <laughs> he's the best. Um, he's just such a positive positive guy, and like you know. There, there could have been a practice where I literally made zero saves and, you know, go to talk to coach Jarbo and, you know, you're a brick wall today. You know, he's just always a positive guy and, and just trying to find ways for you to improve. And uh, going, he, he's a big athlete for, uh, for goalies being, you know, really good athletes. So you would just, you know, try to get in that athletic stance all the time and set yourself self up that way. Um, yeah. It, it was awesome playing for him. And he, I, I coach a little bit goalies now and I'm, I'm just such a, like a, a one trick pony in terms of, I have this lefty shot low to high is like, uh, you know, the one where I could kind of shoot decent speed. And, uh, he was the best shooter on our team, <laughs> you know, really? you know, years removed left and right on the run, step down. He was a freak athlete or is a freak athlete. He's a, uh, he's a great guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's awesome. One thing that he's known for as well is being um, a little fiery in the goal. And, yeah. I, and, and I've read that, yeah. um, that that's how you are as well. I mean, I, I don't know you. I've never played with you. I don't, I've never talked to any of your teammates, but I, I, read, I think I read somewhere that that's how you are. Is that, is that true? And like, yeah. how, does, how does that go into your game? Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I am. I, I guess that's a little bit of the Long Island me. And I think there's a, there's a time and a place. So, Growing up, like, uh, you know, summer lacrosse was fun. Uh, I really, you know, that was a lot of times to, you know, just enjoy playing and, and really, uh, really have fun playing. Playing with Jake, you know, for all those summers really allowed that to, to happen. But when I stepped in cage, I, you know, uh, Navy and Chaminade, I, I was a little fiery. Uh, you know, put a little pressure, little, a lot of pressure on myself and, you know, I, I talked a little bit as well. And uh, you asked some of my teammates in practice, like, yes, I did jaw a little bit, um, but it, it made it fun, you know? Yeah. And it keeps it competitive. Yeah. I mean, as long as it's in yeah. good spirit. I mean, I know when I played um, in college, I had, and he's a great friend of mine to this day. We still text all the time. Uh, but, you know, we would always, we would always get into it at practice. And, and it sounds like, yeah. it sounds like you had a guy, TJ, TJ Hans, Hans, yeah. Hanshi, that you were Hanshi, always getting. TJ Hanshi. Yeah, yeah, tell me about TJ, him. So, <laughs> it's funny. I, I know who he talks about. Yeah, so me and TJ, uh, same year at Navy, went to, we went to NAP together as well. Um, and uh, we would jaw at each other all practice. And he, he's, he's one of my best friends today still. Um, and always will be. But, yeah, we, we would always jaw with each other and go back and forth. And then I remember, uh, for whatever reason, Army Week um, – that's when tensions got really high in practice and, you know, there would be some scuffles in practice and me, me and CJ every year would, would start, uh, would start a scuffle with each other during army week. <laughs> yeah. Get the, get the competition going. Yeah. It bring, brings yeah. it, it kind of brings it out. I love that. That's awesome. Um, you know, is that something you would, you would encourage young goalies to, to do? Is it, is it just like, that's me, that's who I am? Like, what, what if you got a young goalie that you're coaching and, and you see a little bit of fire in them, you just let that go? Or, or what's your thoughts around that? I think it, I think it all depends. It has to be healthy. Um, yeah. You know, and then that goes with maturity too. Um, you know, I, I think when I was younger, a little bigger in the head, um, you know, I talked a little more than I should have. And then, uh, you know, then I waited for the first few saves uh, to make sure I was going to get comfortable in there. Uh, I, I, I think as long as it's healthy and, you know, not ill, ill spirited or anything like that, um, you know, it does, it does put a chip on your shoulder as well as a little added pressure on you. It could be in a good way where, you know, if you're, if you're talking a little smack, you have to be able to back it up. So there's definitely times I got burned, you know, so as long as it's healthy and uh, it should be all right. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. 
I agree. Yeah. Healthy and, you know, good spirited. I mean, you're not like insulting their families and none of that yeah, stuff, right? Nothing you know, like, like that. No. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's all in good spirit, but um, respecting the game. But yeah, if that gets you fired up, then hey, let's. Yeah. I'm, I'm cool and with it. I'm cool. I was with also, it. Little, I was a little fiery too. Like, I, I didn't just sit there and just, like talk all day. It was, it was also with like, uh, you know, with my defense too a little bit and they, they kept me in check as well you know I, I was very fortunate I, I mentioned the guys I played with at Chaminade and uh, the guys I played with at Navy you know as a, as a unit we were very good um, and you know a lot of that came from playing with each other for like three years you know me Chris Fennell, uh Matty Reese, Jules Godino and it was Ryan Everson that he graduated and Hiram Car- uh, Carter stepped up and you know we also had our D-mids DJ Plumer and John Trainer like they, if they saw me getting a line or, or out of line or taking it a little too far, like, yeah. you know, it didn't, it didn't have to come down to coach or, or anything like that. Uh, you know, they kept me in check and we were all on the same page and, and trying to get the job done. Love it. Yep. When I look at your style, you like your style of play. Um, I see a lot and, you know, maybe it's just the tape that I've looked at, but a lot of high arc, a lot of high arc, which, which Maddie Russell did quite a bit. Like he would always yeah. come out, challenge the shooters. Um, did you learn that from him or like, what, you know, how, how did that high arc, higher arc play? And we'll take a look at some saves a little, in a little bit, if you're cool with it, but how did that, that style yeah. come to be? Uh, I think, I think it, like it, it came to be from playing with like, uh, I keep going back to it, but Jake, like, you know, yeah. you see some goalies play, uh, and you know, what worked for them within, I, I think I, I, depending on the time place, I, I did have like a medium to high arc. Uh, sometimes when shots got in tight, I just try to get get as big as possible. Uh, I got burned that a lot like that too because I tend to I, I tended to jump, uh, especially like on inside shots. So then that would put me out of position if the guy was throwing a fake and going low. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's more of like testing some things out and and just trying to make the save. Yeah, love it. Um, when you get to, when you get to Navy, you know what uh did you guys do to get better was it was it drills was it a lot of shots if it was drills what kind of drills like what what did your goalie uh, training regiment look like um so i i think that's a great thing and like going back to coach jarbo before um and even coach dom as well like you know my my freshman and stuff my first let's use my freshman year in navy nolan hickey was the starting goalie yeah nolan's like six six i'm like six foot and then we had paul zimmerman who, who's a little shorter than me. So we, we, we were three different sizes and, you know, each brought something different to, to playing goalie. And it was more one-on-one tailoring uh, to, you know, focus on things for you to get better at, as opposed to like incorporating things into, into your game. So, mm, yeah. you know, during the fall, it was more of like starting from the bottom up. So, you know, make sure your stance is good, your positioning in the net, in the cage. And I think the big thing is funny, like, answering the question why you know if your hands are a certain way if you're where you are on your arc why it is you're doing that what you're trying to accomplish um and then you know you fast forward to in the season you know if you're if you're playing uh trying to think you know of of some teams we play but more tailored to what they like like i remember the week of yale uh they they like the uh long feed from behind to the top and it's to a step down shot. So mm-hmm. it's more of more of tailoring it that way, what you're going to see each week. Um, yeah. And, and, and the normal goalie stuff, like I, I walked the line till my last game, you know, and I was doing that like fifth grade. So the, some things never change and um, you know, you can tailor it to each week, whatever you need to focus on. Yeah. Walk the line. It's great drill. It's our, it's our <laughs> version of shadow boxing, you know, just getting yeah. that, getting that, building up that muscle memory. Um, Cause that's what yeah, it's about. Definitely. That's what it's about so much for lacrosse goalies is like, yeah, not even having to think about that movement that we need to make, just seeing the ball and knowing that here's what I need to do to get there. Right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, there's, there's definitely a different, you could tell like when the goalie's not thinking and just reacting and then when the goalie's thinking a little too much and, you know, I was, you, you, you could see that a little bit right away. Yeah. They get a little bit robotic in the movements. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. You can definitely Jam see that. themselves. You know. Yeah. Um, I read that uh, Coach Dom, um, ba- basically what you said is, you know, he-, he changed your game, changed some of your habits and showed me a more offensive way 
to play goalie. And I would love to hear a little bit more about that. What, what, what exactly does that mean? Yeah. So, um, you know, and, and keep in mind, this is, this is my senior, senior year at Navy. Um, so like I was learning and, and incorporating these new things, like up until the last, you know, game I really had, uh, you could always get better and things that way. So, um, coach Dom, and he brought the, some stuff from Syracuse. Um, what he did was, and I hope like I could help you guys visualize this, but he would take, let's say, a 20 foot rope or a 30 foot rope and he would tie both ends to each pipe. And then you would have a cone coming out to where the shooter was. And from there, you get to see where, like the, the angle of your step, where do you need to get to cover that net? Yeah. Um, so it could be, I was more of like a 45 degree guy when I stepped, I, I really wanted to attack the ball, but um, you get to see how far you need to go for each, each way. And then, you know, you can have that dead center, like top center, or you can move it, you know, down the alleys and you see how that, that triangle gets smaller and smaller. So you get to see where, you know, the area that you're giving up. And then what we were talking about before with those low angle shots, you really get to see what you're, what you're giving up when you they are able to see how small that triangle is at that point. Yeah. Um, you know, so I was a goalie, like when I hugged my pipe, I didn't like my, uh, and, you know, this was something that I, I worked with Coach Jarbo before then. Um, I didn't like having my ankle right up against the pipe because if I felt like if I made a step to, you know, whatever foot was on that pipe, I would, I would bump into the pipe each time. So that goes into a little bit of a hierarchy as well, you know, not trying to get the, the pipe in the way. Um, but, you know, when you're able to see how much you're giving up and how far you need to actually get to save the ball with your hands and your body, you know, it allows you to play offense with it because you, you know where the openings are um, and you know where you got to get to. If, yeah, if interesting. That makes sense. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I've done that drill before and it um, it's really eye-opening, especially when you get, you know, to the tighter angles of just how like um, little you need to move to get to the far pipe, like when they're at a, yeah. very, at a very tight angle. So it's it's just good to know in your head. And I also love that point about, knowing what you're giving up. Um, I did this training okay. session with Tillman Johnson and he talked quite a bit about that, especially on low angle shots. He's like, look at this. Like I know ex he knew exactly what he was giving up. Right. So, you know, if the ball was shot right at him, great. I don't move. Right. But I know yeah. I'm giving up five hole. I know I'm giving up off stick. And so those are kind of the two areas that I'm looking for the shot to come. Right. And then yep. it comes there. Then I react. If it doesn't, if it comes right at me, then I just stay there. And I, I thought that was kind of a cool way to think about uh shots especially at low angles when you know the options are limited for the shooter yeah definitely and uh, like to be honest i that was the first time i saw that my senior year and i, I was i was mind blown <laughs> like <laughs> you're telling me that's that's it that's as far as i need a step uh you know but it was um yeah it's definitely a good you know tools to use and even just coming back to and then like i think taking that 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 one step further is find your visual representation like re visual spots on the field that you could key into on where that is, whether it's the restraining box, you know, like that corner, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know, after doing that drill where you should be, um, you know, I, I, if you can find those, those references on the field to, you know, recenter you, it's all good. Yeah. I don't know where I, where I learned this, but there's a technique called like the landmark technique where essentially like you pick up a tree or a bathroom or something on the 45. And then, you know, like, all right, if I'm lined up on that tree or that, bathroom or that soccer goal like that's my 45 right yeah. right right and left um and then and then i think over time like you tend to then just get more comfortable in the crease as as you get yeah, reps, right you know yeah. yeah and you know where you are so um but the landmark technique's good if you're just getting started i think yeah definitely yeah um what about a time in your career when you went through a slump uh did that happen and and how did you work to get out of that I, I would love to meet the goalie that says they uh, they never went through a slump, uh, especially when you're in college. You know, we started fall ball, let's just say late August, early September, and like you, the goal is to play to May. Um, but you know, even if you're playing till till like April, it, that's a lot of time to be you know 100 percent the whole time. So it's it's natural you're going to go through slumps. And what I did and and um, you know 
I, I listen to Coach Jarbo's podcast as well. You know, I love seeing shots. So I just try to see as many shots as possible. And then if I was going through that slump, I wanted those shots to come faster and faster, not necessarily speed, but like the, the amount of time between shots, because uh. then I didn't have to think about it and I could just react, you know, um, he, he would lay out like, let's just say 15 balls about seven yards from the net. He would do it before games too. And, you know, it's just scoop and shoot. He would just scoop and shoot the whole time. And then, you know, if it was, you know, during, during practice, uh, coach soul would set up, it always, it always was Casey Reese, uh, who has one of the hardest shots on our team when I was there. And it was just two minutes of him just rapid fire shooting, uh, the whole time. Um, you know, so it, it just, I, I think the, the least amount of time between shots, yes, you got to reset. Yes. You got to get in your stance again, but it allowed me to, to think less and just react and, you know, seeing as many shots as possible, possible gets you to recenter and regroup. Um, you know, if it, if it happens during a game or a certain point in practice, that's, that comes with being like the leader of the defense, right? Like, uh, you know, try to set yourself up for success um, to, for where you want those shots to come from. Like you save hundred percent of the shots you don't see. So, you know, if you could talk your defense into a spot where you give them a low angle shot or, or an area where you're comfortable from seeing, um, you know, that's just as good as a save if, if they don't get that shot off. But if they do get that shot off, you're, um, you're comfortable and, and, and in a good spot to make that save and react. Yeah. You save 100% of the shots you don't see. I love that. That's like the that's like the reverse Wayne Gretzky, right? Did, yeah, did, did yeah. you make I, up that? Did you make up that quote, or, or is that did you get that from somewhere? I no, I, I thought about that for for a while. Like I remember uh, Nolan Hickey, Shamanad goalie. He played at Navy, and I, there was a clip on him, and he was talking about his recruiting process. This is still when I was young, um, in high school. And he would talk about how, like, coaches noticed him at camps and stuff because of how he communicated with his, de his defense. He had a very loud and commanding, deep, deep voice. Um, you know, and if you just tailor that to, uh, you know, that chemistry that I was talking about with the defense earlier, um, you know, both at Shaman and both at Navy, we, we played with each other for a number of years where, hey, I know what so-and-so is going to do. I could, uh, you know, talk that slide into a double or, or things like that because that's yeah. that's really where I think we took the next step in, uh, in Navy's defense and with coach Wellner was you know being a little opportunistic uh with with those double teams and and how we were sliding yeah so. love it love it um going back to that slump so so I guess it was your senior year uh you know you struggled yeah. early uh, against Boston. Yeah. Struggled early. I struggled early in the season was flat out terrible against Boston and coach soul had to sit down, uh, in your office. Uh, what, what did he, what did he tell you? It's just more of like a, um, it, it, it was a conversation. It wasn't like, a, um, you know, John, you gotta save the ball type deal. You know, uh, it was just more of like, Hey, what, what's good. You know, what's going on? Is there anything going on? You're putting too much pressure on yourself. You're doing this doing that uh, it, it was just a genuine conversation in terms of regrouping and just you know simplifying the game just seeing the ball uh getting the ball and then you know it comes down to uh i was talking to i was talking to pat ryan he's a he's a goalie at navy uh now right. and i i remember you know in, in hindsight you think of these things uh you know i wish i knew that when i was playing too and i remember my junior year uh before army all the seniors on the team talked about like what this game meant to them what what the army navy uh, army navy game means to them and stuff and i i still remember it to this day will sadowski uh was like hey we've been every time ever since we picked up a stick we've been preparing for this game tomorrow so that alone should give you the confidence to you know know your what you're capable of doing uh if you just take that approach to like each game or each possession or each shot you know, you, you have been training the, the whole time for, for that opportunity. Right. So yeah. uh, that should give you the confidence alone to, Hey, I know what I'm doing. You just got to regroup and, you know, back to basics and see the ball and get the ball. Yeah. It goes into the men to the mental game, which I love. It's, it's such an important element of lacrosse goalie. And yeah. it's like the human mind is so uh, fickle. 
You know, you put in hours and hours and hours of training and then your mind is like, oh man, I don't know if I'm, I don't know. You start feeling all these nerves and you're like, I don't know if I'm good. Yeah. You know, and, it, yeah. and it's like, it's like so much of it is just exactly what you just said, which is trust the training. Like you've taken yeah. thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of shots, right? Like you've practiced hours. You've had yeah. a stick in your hand since you were in sixth grade. Like trust that training. You're a great goalie. Yeah. Um, is a great mental yeah, lesson. It's, uh, go ahead. It's, it's, it's funny. There's two things you just made me think of. One is like, uh, you know, your defense could help you out a lot with that too. Coaches could help you out. Uh, other teammates could help you out as well. There was definitely times in my career where I would let in a goal and all the defense regroups and, you know, I didn't have to calm myself down because, you know, my, my teammates helped me out and recenter me uh, as well. And like, it's great to have that chemistry uh, and those things going. Uh, but you, you, you were talking about how, you know, the mental game, getting the jitters and stuff. I, uh, I took Tums before every game because I would get, I would get jitters before every game. So we call them John secret stuff, kind of like space jams, uh, Mike secret stuff. So, Yeah. Yeah, Tums. All right. And anything else that you did? Because that's a pretty common thing, especially for young goalies as like they're going into uh, like a big tryout or a big game. Yeah. And, and one, and I'd love to hear if you did anything else, but one you got to understand is it's so natural. Like if you, I would be concerned if you didn't get jitters because that doesn't, that means then yeah. it doesn't matter to you. Right. You don't get jitters when you're playing summer ball, pick up summer pickup ball with your friends because it doesn't matter right? There's nothing on yeah. the line. The, this, these games matter and it means that it's important to you. So I, one, I like that you have the jitters, but anything else come to mind on how besides Tums or is do you Tums and get out there? <laughs> yeah. I, you know, there was a few things where uh, like pre-game rituals and stuff, like, you know, I, I stuck to the same long sleeve shirt. Um, I, I wore the same chest protector since I was in sixth grade. I didn't want to, you know, switch from that. Uh, that made my mom, mom a little nervous. Like I taped the heart guard to the back of it. Uh, so I was all good. And then um, trying to think of other things I did. Not, not, not really, you know, yeah. in, in terms of the locker room, I didn't really sit down much before games. I just wanted to get out there. You know, the, the time that we were in the locker room where, you know, we weren't having to catch pregame or, or getting warmed up or doing those pregame drills. I, I was, you know, just moving and, you know, just trying to stay focused. Yeah. Were you, when we talk about communication styles, like, were you a real loud, boisterous goalie or were you more like, uh, like, a, like, I mean, there's silent leaders that are, that are great goalies as well. What, you know, what was your sort of communication style out there on the field and with your teammates? I try to, like, we were talking about being a little fiery before, like, yeah, that was, that was a little, little part of my game. And, um, but I, I try to talk as much as possible. Um, you know, and it was more of like calling out where the ball is. When you get to, you know, certain levels, like, yes, everybody knows the ball is top right, but it's more of like, you know, things that you could say to put, put guys in the position to succeed, whether it's, uh, you know, the, the play or like a, not a play, but a, a, a system that you've seen in film where, you know, you know, this guy's going to come around and, you know, either inside roll or something like that. So it was more of communicating that way. Um, and setting guys up to double because uh, once we got the ball on this turf, that's when we were that's when we were dangerous with a guy like Matt Reese and Chris Finnell and, and Jules, basically any of our holes. So um, if if I could help them put them in a position where we could get that double, uh, one I don't have to see that shot, and two uh, that's right into our our bread and butter. Yeah, love it, love it, awesome. Well, I got some tape of the 2016. Uh, quarterfinal game i thought i could share that and um we could yeah. talk about some saves if you remember it, it was quite some time ago <laughs> what are we going on <laughs> six six years ago now um but it starts with it starts i guess while i'm bringing it up you could tell me maybe you know you guys are an at-large bid you get into the tournament unranked um and knock off yeah. num number four yale i mean that must have been a pretty great feeling that yeah that was that was awesome and um yeah, it was awesome. So at large bid, uh, we didn't we didn't really uh, expect to make the tournament. To be totally honest, uh, it was finals week at, at Navy, and I remember it like I was studying for a final, and I had the selection show on in the background, and I saw our name come up to play Yale. I closed the books. I didn't, you know, it was senior at Navy. I'm done <laughs> studying. 
Um, and, you know, we all went to the locker room and stuff and we were just pumped. Um, and then, yeah, you know, that was, that was awesome too, because nobody expected anything from us. You know, there was a little controversy with us and Rutgers. Um, you know, I think Yale, they were, they were the number one seed or for like number one ranked team for most of the year. Uh, we were just coming off of a, a few bad performances in a row. Um, you know, we had Yale, Sacred Heart, then, then Army. Um, so, you know, we had nothing to lose and we played like it. Um, and it was awesome. Yeah. Love it. Love it. So then you get a quarterfinal matchup uh, with the Brown Bears and Jack Kelly, who I imagine uh, he's a West Islip guy or East Islip guy. Was, did, yeah. Or did you know him from high school? So no, I, I actually didn't know Jack in, in high school. Cause I was, I think I was a year ahead of him. So okay. he had Kyle Turry, the goalie at Duke when I played, um, when we played West Islip, he, he was in net. And then, um, but, you know, I, I only talked to him, Jack Kelly after uh, shaking hands after that game. And, you know, he's a tremendous goalie and also a tremendous, tremendous guy. So, I uh, big fan of his. Amazing guy. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of his as well. I mean, I'm, he's one of the guys that you, root, you just want to root for so bad, especially coming yeah. after coming back uh, from his injury. It looks like you, it looks, so we're looking at you jog out there. It looks like you got a little swagger going on with those arms. Is that something or no? <laughs> Yeah, just trying to be, just trying to be loose. And you said superstition. Every time I got in that, I hit the, I hit the, uh, the pipes the same way every time. That was the same way since probably like ninth grade. Um, that had never changed. And what do you do? You get, you get, you go left, left pipe, top, left, right, right top pipe, and right, hold the top, and then shake the net. Yeah, yeah, love it, love it. Turn around, give the boys some love, and it's time, time yeah. to play. Um, it that's says Finnell, right here. That's Finnell headbutting me before the game. You know, <laughs> you know, come on, man. But yeah. it's all good. Yeah, yeah. It says right here, second in the NCAA, it's seven goals a game allowed. That's pretty amazing. And when I think about Navy, I Thank always, you. I don't know, I always think strong defense, right? I mean, is, is that kind of like a Navy yeah. type of lacrosse? Yes, ideally, that's what we want to be. And we, we take a lot of pride in that. And um, going back to being fiery before during practice, there is, we had a competition with the offensive, uh, the offensive guys on the team. Um, you know, yes, we want to be, a, a very good defense and solid unit. Yeah. Why'd you go with uh, number 14? Have you always, have you always gone with 14? No, no. So I, um, I don't know what it is at Chamonix, but I, I don't know if they still do it anymore, but like Nolan Hickey was like 46. I was number 48 in high school. Seemed like we always wore 40 something. And then uh, that was the number available when I went to Navy. So I looked out with a, a solid, uh, solid number. There you go. <laughs> I love it. All right. Um, so I think first save comes. Jack Kelly, eighth in the country. By the way, there's 21 saves. So uh, we're going to skip over some of them. Excellent game. Excellent game by both goalies, really. I appreciate it. That's potentially three uh, goals. I still want pass interference on this call. But that is. Sorry. That is interference. I'm sorry. Right? So if you just got the I audio, I, I got to remember some people just listen to the podcast. So the guy feeds it across crease. It's kind of a bad pass because it's too close to you, but great heads up play, you you pick it off, right? And yeah, I mean, I guess thank you. Yeah, when you talk about an athletic goalie, like I mean, to me, picking off passes around the crease is something that that yeah. we need to do. I mean, you're stealing a possession right there. Yeah, especially like you could really maximize your time with X because like I'm not calling offensive guys lazy, but when they're just getting the ball around the horn uh, and getting the ball that, that behind the net back to X, you could really capitalize on catch them sleep and make a big time play. Yeah. Especially when they like their body language is that like, there's no way they're going to shoot. Like th this guy's not, Yeah. I mean, he, maybe he rips one surprise, but he's so far away that, that like you can, yeah. you can, I mean, he looks like a feeder, right? Like he looks like a feeder and he does, yeah. he feeds it. And then you go to throw an outlet and it looks like he does hit ball first, but the follow through connects to his stick. That's, that's interference free clear. I hope so. Right. <laughs> you, you see me pleading my case here in a minute. Yeah. What do you, what do you, what do you, what yeah, do you say? Were, I mean, that, that's exactly what you got to be saying. To say official. Yeah. Know? And what do you say? No, no, no yeah, you can't, it's, you don't have time for that much of a conversation at that point. I know, I know how it goes. <laughs> I've had that same conversation yeah, with refs. I, and I also the accountability factor. Like I wasn't, I wasn't a captain on the team. So leave it to Jules, leave it to, uh, to Kina. I uh, don't talk to the refs, you know? 
Yeah. Let them well, do their, their job. Oh, man. All right. That one got me fired up, but let's see. Let's see what, <laughs> what, we, what we got in the next one here. He's been replacing Dylan Malloy in the attack group. Normally a midfielder, the senior. Does have Ooh. 16 goals on the camp. Great save. Yeah. So he feeds it up top, top. Uh, I guess it's going to be top right, just hands free rip and boom, right on it. Uh, was that always yeah. that kind of low style of save, like kind of getting your foot right behind the ball? Because it looks like it catch it, it does, actually does catch you on the foot, right? It, yeah, that caught me on the shin. And and like, the, I would say, um, ideally, you want to be textbook, right? You, you know, step, hand, follow, and, yeah. and those textbook saves. That was more of like the the – the feed right to a shot um, and just that was just reacting um, and I do do a little bit of splits here and there you know I wouldn't call them you know show a little bit of athleticism but you know that was just quick reaction and, and just trying to get to the ball yeah well it's a great save off the shin yeah that one's got to smart a little bit but hey their adrenaline's going I mean this is the this is the quarterfinals you're yeah. playing number five brown uh, you're right in the yeah. game. I'm sure. I'm sure you didn't feel a thing. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I did not. Um, all right. One twenty-three. Quickly, Brown working it again for Graham. And it's front a shot on the save that time. Players all over the place. That's a great save. So the guy from top center feeds it right into the crease. Who? turns around and just fires one kind of like overhead. Oh, my camera went off. I'm still here. I'll get that in a second. <laughs> uh, and, and, and boom, it, I guess at this point, talk to me through, through this save. I mean, you're just, I mean, you're essentially just reading his body language at that point. Cause he's so close, right? Yeah. That was just a, just a quick shot and, and just trying to react. <clears throat> um, if you see here, like um, they're already leading three, one, we still have six and a half minutes left in the, the first quarter. Um, you know, so I, I, I was just trying to get, get some saves at this point, you know, kind of settle down into the game. I just gave up that, that behind the back from the pole. Um, so, you know, just seeing the ball and trying to react to it. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Oh, there we go. I'm back. All right. So yeah, great save. Love, love this save. And he, I mean, he really, it's this interesting, like the way he does this shot. Like, I don't know if this guy had a lot of whip in his stick, but he like really brings it back like over his head. Yeah. And so yeah. I, I don't know, as a goalie, that makes it a little easier to read, right? Because you can kind of see where he's going to go with his body language. Yeah, and he's also trying, I feel like he was just trying to get that shot off quick. You know, we have three defensemen around him. He's probably just trying to, you know, not not get crushed at that point. So he's just trying to get it out, out of yeah. his and, and he ends up, <laughs> ends up getting crushed. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, cool. Uh, 204 right at the release point good pass it again save here from uh, Connors on the near side he's got three so you said my adrenaline was going before I I felt this this shot uh pretty bad <laughs> you see me reaching down after the play um he got me good here yeah so it's it's the the pulls up top right and then he passes it it's a real actually nice look nice find by the by this pull guy and he finds an attackman that's right you know, I mean, I don't know, five yards away, super close, rips one, and boom, what'd that get you in the hip? It, it got me there. <laughs> oh, in the in the in the unmentionables. Yeah, you know, oh. the spot. it got me good. And at that point, I, I just passed the ball out, and I was like, "Please, just give me uh, give me a few seconds to regroup." At this point. That's, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. What did, what did you, do you remember what you went with? Cause nowadays, like a lot of kids use the ice hockey, uh, you know, the ice hockey goal. That's what, yeah. That's what I use. Um, so like once you, once you switch to that and it's a little uncomfortable at first, cause you know, it, it was two cups in one. So it just, uh, once you get used to that though, you, you're not going back. Right. Right. Just, just to, uh, too valuable the area <laughs> love it all right 332 let's check this one out matt graham able to take it all the way in mark and ken on a shot in front here man these get me pumped up i know i know i think i think you said you, you when you're having a bad day you go back and watch these as well i i, 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 I could i could <laughs> see a little pick me up yeah. yeah i need a little yeah. pick me up watch these saves uh so this one again like 
I mean, Brown's offense at this point was really good. I mean, they're finding real good looks. These are really good looks. Yeah. Uh, that's another on the crease five yards away. And this is what I'm talking about that high, you know, that high uh, arc. I mean, you finish at the top of the, at the top of the crease the there. Um, one thing about this save, and I'm curious to get your thoughts. I mean, this is not the right movement, right? Like as you'll probably, no. right. I mean, as you probably can, can say like the, it, it's easier to go over there, uh, but you still make the save. And I'm curious, like, is that at this point, he's so close. Like you just need to guess. Uh, to guess, no, not guess, but like sort of read them, read them and then read them and sort of try and like understand where he's going as opposed to just sitting back and waiting. Cause you don't have time. Yeah. You don't have time. And like, yeah, I, I also try to play that, you know, mid, mid to high arc and just be explosive as I was getting out. Um, so, but I, I felt like I got caught with that a decent bit throughout my career where I would get caught going underneath uh, on an offset hip shot as opposed to coming over the top. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, um, I, and I don't know who told me this or, or what point in my career, whatever it is, you got to commit to it. Right. So if you're coming underneath and you realize the shot's coming a little higher, guess what? You got to get that top hand as high as you can to stop it because it's, it's going to be way too hard to come back the other way and make that save. Um, so, you know, it's, it's reading that shot. I knew, I knew what I was giving up at that point too went with it and I, I just had to get up as high as I could uh, yeah. at that point. But there's, there's a few times in this, especially in this game where I got caught um, going underneath when I should have went over the top. Yeah. I was going to say that, but you still make the save. Like you make the save on this one, like you get those hands up. Um, and I, and I think a lot of that has to do with the positioning. Cause if you're, you know, if you're back in the crease or back on the, on the, um, on the goal line, yeah. like I don't, you don't make that save. I don't think, but yeah. uh, yeah, it's a great save. Um, and then so, let me see if we can let's see the next one here. Henry Blinn's going to get frustrated. Who's coming off a game where he scored four goals in the last game. Another behind the back shot tells and again. Yeah, behind the back shot. I mean, th these are ones that are like so close and they kind of catch you by surprise. But I mean, just positioning. It's a yeah. positioning save if you ask me, right? Yeah, definitely. And, and, and more to this point, we, we kind of touched on it earlier. Like we we played Yale first round. We were playing Brown second round and we played Yale on Sunday and we watched Brown play Hopkins on Saturday. And Hopkins was a team we lost to in double overtime and Brown, Brown took it to him. So we were definitely expecting after watching that game, like a heavy uh, offensive powerhouse of a team. Uh, and they definitely delivered. But uh, I remember Bailey Tills. He was, I think he was their fourth attackman because uh, Dylan Malloy was actually hurt in this game. And right. he kind of, he kind of gave us this, uh, you know, he was very, he was very slick. And even this shot right here, right here. Um, yes, it is positioning you see, but you know, throughout most of my career, I didn't have to worry about that kind of shot. And it, it, it kind of caught me off guard a little bit and relied on my positioning more so to, uh, to make that save. Yeah. Oh, cool. Cool backstory. Um, <laughs> all right. 418. He gave us this, uh, there's a, there's a lot the of pass in front and ended up with it is Balestri is he on. Yeah. It's kind of like a repeat of the, of the save two saves ago, right? Where this isn't, this is a little bit, a little bit further out, but still like hands free. I mean, that's, you know, sort of advantage offense and you go under, but you commit yeah. and you go for it and you get that body up there and make that deflection. I don't, I don't know if you have anything to add on that one. Yeah. I think that was pipe. I, so that, I think there I got lucky. <laughs> Oh, you didn't, um, you didn't, you're saying this ain't a save. This should not be in the save edit. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, there, there was a few that, uh, that missed in that. I, I did get lucky this game, uh, you know, more than a few times, but some, some did miss the net. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. Cause nowadays you, you got such, you got higher definition cameras, more frames per second and, and forget trying to watch Tillman Johnson, 2003, 2003. It's ridiculous. Like just, it's just so blurry. Yeah. It's so blurry. It looks so old. Um, all right. Yeah, his well, are all textbook though. His, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's he, true. Right. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I gave you the save on this one, John. So I appreciate you, you, it. You can count that's it. A, you can count it from me. It's the coach Jarbo <laughs> treatment. Yeah. He had like hey. 700 saves at Navy. We need to watch the film at that on that. 
yeah, that's true. My, uh, my senior year, we had a, we had a head coach, uh, that was a goalie and he would always pad my stats. He'd always come over like, what'd you have? What'd you have like 14, 15 saves that game, Damon? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Sounds about right. You know, meanwhile, <laughs> eight tops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've done it through a few times from that stuff. Yeah. There's Jack way and an offering. And once again, Jack Kelly. I got four, three, six. Let's check this one out. Knows his skills. Playing with the pass. And in front, another save. And the shot is to Brewster Warbone. Yeah, and there's a bunch of saves like that that you make that are just right, you know, right on the goal. Talk to me about these type of saves. Because at this point, I mean, to me, it's just textbook, right? Like you're you're waiting to the last possible moment and then just matching sticks. And that's exactly what yeah. you do here, or what you do here, right? Yeah. Um you know, that, that, that was really it, is it, just trying to match, uh, match stick. He's, he's obviously closing in on the crease here. Um, he's going to get that shot off, you know, pretty soon. So just waiting for that opportunity to match stick. And, you know, they saw – I was seeing shots constantly. Uh, so it allowed you to get, get in a groove and, and see the ball well. Yeah, love it. Um, I want to skip all the way to the, to the end here of this one save that um, I put a star Put more pressure on the ball here. Put There's a not going to be on. enough time. LaBeouf, he can turn and shoot, and he does, and Connors comes up with another amazing save. Oh, I want to paint the scene here because this is unbelievable. I mean, so Brown's up by a goal, single goal, right? I mean, you guys are right there, right there, 30 seconds left, um, and there's barely anything on the shot clock. I mean, they could probably run it out. I don't know. Anyway, they end up taking a shot with 15 seconds left right in front, and hello, stuff. City, what a what a big time save! I, I was watching that uh, earlier today, and I just like let out a like yes, <laughs> it's a good, great yeah. save, man. I don't yeah, know if you have anything to add on that one. That that's how we were gonna get the ball back. Uh, you know, <laughs> ask my teammates if I if I was out of net chasing somebody, you know, they would have had an open net and and would have found the open man. So this is this is what we needed. So uh, you know, it was awesome. Yeah, and you rebounded it right to your guy too. I don't know. It's, I mean, that's just genius. Yeah, probably that was, more... on, that was on purpose. Too. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like, hey, alley oop, um, pass it to him. <laughs> anyway, you guys, I I did not include the final play in this edit for some reason. I don't know what happens, but unfortunately, you do not get yeah. the victory, and and that's it. But um, thank you for going through that. That was that was fun. I don't know if you got any other stories from that game that we sh that we need to know about. Uh, from that game, I, it was just a lot of fun. You know, that, that run was awesome. Uh, you know, being at large bid and then taking down Yale and then playing Brown and, you know, how that how that game transpired, like, uh, you know, 11-10, it was back and forth the whole time. And then, you know, like I rolled right from there into graduation week from the academy. So I was on yeah. cloud nine. You know, it was such a such an awesome time. That is awesome. And then, um, so you, gra you graduated and, and went into the service. And first of all, thank you very much yeah. for your service to our country. My, my dad was in the army and it's, 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 it's really awesome. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for the support. Yeah. Um, and so you, and tell me a little bit about your job because you, you had mentioned it before we hit record. It's, it just sounded amazing. Yeah. Uh, I was a nuclear surface warfare officer. Um, so what that is, I, uh, so right from, from the Brown game, I went into graduation week, and then I moved out to San Diego on a, a destroyer out there. I was stationed there for two years, um, and then from there, I, uh, I I deployed twice, and then went to Charleston to go through the nuclear power pipeline, uh, which is more of an academic setting. Uh, learn how nuclear reactors work, and then uh, get qualified to stand watch on them for the Navy or operate them. And uh, then I went to uh, Norfolk, Virginia and was stationed on the carrier down there. So yeah, that's my, that's my naval career. Awesome. In a nutshell. So all, pretty, from a, all, from know, a all from a, all from a history major, all from a history major too. Yeah. 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 There so you go. That was uh, that was a challenge going through like the heavy engineering stuff, but uh, you know, just the lessons you learn on the lacrosse field will, will serve you well. Yeah. I mean, if you can save, you know, a Dylan Malloy crankshot, you can, you can solve a nuclear <laughs> reactor, right? That's what I always uh, say. No. It's, it's more, <laughs> it, you, you got a lot more help there, but it's more like, just, you know, 
grinding through it. You know, you have a job, a task to accomplish. So study the stuff, learn the stuff, and, you know, do what's asked for you. That's what, you know, you go to Navy for a reason. So uh, I right. knew I was going to have to serve at some point. Um, you know, so it was a huge honor. And, um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Wouldn't trade it. Love it. Love it. Um, I wanted to ask, did, did your, uh, the, the Terminator, John Connors, right? Did, did your teammates call you the Terminator? Or is that just something that like other people did? That was something that other people did. Uh, okay. You know, I've actually never seen the Terminator. Um, I, I've heard it all the time. And then, uh, you know, I was called JC. And then, uh, you know, <laughs> being one of five boys, my mom called me everything under the sun. So, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, not Terminator. So it's all good. Oh, good. Well, John, thank you so much for, for coming on and, uh, and chatting lacrosse goalie. Um, it's been a ton of fun and thank you for going through those saves. That was amazing. Uh, if you had to leave the young really goalies out, you. yeah, if you had to leave the young goalies out there with one final, uh, piece of advice, what would that be? Just have fun, you know, just enjoy it. It goes by way too quick. Uh, you know, four years of high school, four years of college, um, you know, just make sure you're having fun, have confidence in what you're doing and enjoy the process, whether, whether it's recruiting when it could be super stressful or you're going through, you know, competing for the starting job or, you know, whatever adversity you have in your career, just make sure, you know, you're having fun and still enjoying the game because that's what it's all about. Very well said, John. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Have a great one.